Enter for your chance to win a tiny house and support a great cause. Go to omaze.com slash tiny house expedition. Hi, my name is Lindsay Keel and we're here in Loveland, Colorado with my zero squared Aurora tiny house. old and I work as an archaeologist so I get to travel a bit I also get to work from home I spend a lot of time hanging out with my cat here at home and then I also have a horse his name is Dub so on my free time I like to go out and ride him I love to go hiking snowshoeing skiing camping backpacking I just really love the outdoors so living in Colorado has been really good for that some of my top lifestyle goals are to not be constrained by one location. Um, living in a typical house, if you want to move, you have to pack up the whole house, sell it, or um, find renters, or find a new place to rent. And with tiny living, I can just pack up the breakables, find somebody to haul my house, and just move it to a new location. I think the most rewarding part about tiny living is that I can afford to live on my own. I don't have to have roommates, uh, despite living in a, a place that has a pretty high cost of living. So my Zero Squared Aurora is the second house that Zero Squared built and sold to a customer. And as you can see, it's got a pop out on this side and there's a pop out on the other side. They both have cedar siding, which offsets the gray of the house. So why don't we come around to the other side? And you can see here is my hookup. So we've got the city water here and I have um, winterized. So there's heat tape and insulation that's covering that to keep it from freezing in the winter temperatures. And then we've got my 50 amp power cable here. As you can see, I also have my house skirted. It keeps it warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer and it protects my pipes it also allows me to store things under there so as you can see we've got cedar on both sides and then i've got i've got some lights up on top during christmas i put christmas lights up there with it but right now it's just my white lights that help me see when i come home at night and just make it a little bit more cheerful so here's where the power cord that hooks up to the house at the back plugs in and as you can see here it runs underneath the house and I have it come out a little window in my skirting and it's also where I have the automatic timer for my lights so my lights go on at a certain time and then I always have light to when I come home at night and then they go off before it gets too dark and annoys my neighbors so over here at the front of the trailer I have two cabinets this one here holds my two propane tanks. So as you can see, and I also use it for storage. So I've got the two propane tanks. I use those for my stove and oven, the hot water heater, and that's about it. So it only takes me maybe two tanks a couple of times a year. Um, so I don't use much propane at all. It's really, really nice. And then over on this side over here is another cabinet that I use for storage. A lot of my outdoor gear, my snowshoes, it's really anything that doesn't need to be in the house, but that I want to keep in a safe space. I keep it locked up usually. And then I've got my trunk here that I use for my exercise equipment. So instead of keeping it in the house, I keep it locked up here. And in the summer and spring, I'll do some exercising out here. I recently, and I'm still building this little patio. So I'm gonna be using that for exercise area and just to keep my feet a little bit cleaner when I go in the house, since this is a dirt campground. And here we've got my stairs that my friend and I built. And as you can see, there's a bunch of sand dollars here. So I really like seeing these sand dollars every time I come outside or come home because it just really reminds me of all the fun times in Gig Harbor that I've had with my friends. Thanks to our sponsor, Omaze. Looking to go tiny? Enter for a chance to win a beautiful tiny home built by Modern Tiny Living. 
Work with the design and building pros at Modern Tiny Living to create your dream tiny house and customize it to your heart's content. And you'll have up to $130,000 to do it. And how would you use this tiny house? A full-time home? Vacation cabin? Home office? Just think about the possibilities. And what's better than a dreamy custom tiny home? Your donation supports a truly wonderful cause, Hope Valley Rescue Mission. They're devoted to reducing poverty, hunger, and homelessness by offering immediate assistance and long-term solutions. Their safe shelter program includes building tiny home villages for those in need. You can win tiny and give big at the same time. What's not to love? For your chance to win a custom tiny house and support a great cause, go to omaze.com slash tiny house expedition. Why don't you come on in and we can take a look inside. So this house is approximately 370 square feet. Most of it is ground floor living space, and then there's a loft in the back above the bathroom. So the design of this tiny house is pretty unique. It has this divider that I'd love to show you. And what it does is it really separates the living room here from the bedroom that's on the other side. And it allows you, if you've got a spouse or if you have people visiting, to just really separate the two rooms. So. The bedroom is the bedroom and the living room is the living room and just kind of like a typical house how they're two separate rooms so that's one really nice feature about this house that i like that just makes it feel um, very comfortable and like there's specific uses for specific rooms when i do move the house there's these two slide outs there's one here that's the office slash kitchen and bedroom and then over on the other side is the living room and these two pop outs make the house go from eight and a half feet wide to 15 feet wide. Zero Square Tiny Homes in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, they built my tiny house. And I did a lot of research, um, looked at a lot of different companies before going tiny, and I ultimately chose Zero Squared for the design and the layout. I really loved that it has a ground floor bedroom, that I don't have to climb into a loft every night. And if I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I don't have to climb down from a loft. So my tiny house, when I got it, cost, I believe I spent about 77000 maybe a little bit more. And I did finance it. I was able to put some down, but the bank loaned me the majority of what I, what I used to buy the house. Some of the biggest challenges I encountered going tiny was I had to finance my tiny house. Banks, when you ask for an RV loan, even if you never say the words tiny house and just say it's a bumper pull trailer, which is what I kept calling it, it's just a really difficult process because they expect you, when you go buy an RV, it's already built. You take their money and you go to a lot and you buy it right then and there. I had to explain to them that this was a new build and it was a new company and it was a custom build. Then they were like, okay, and worked with me and then trying to keep it a little under wraps that it is a tiny house. I mean, it's RVIA certified, so it's technically an RV. So it shouldn't be a problem that I get an RV loan. But four years ago, tiny houses were still relatively new and banks are still trying to figure it out. So it was definitely a process. It probably took me over two months of just working with the bank to get financed. And then once I did go tiny, just learning how to live in a space like this. So learning in the winter, how to winterize, how to keep your pipes from freezing, that you need a heated water hose and how to protect the exposed pipes. So winterizing was probably the biggest challenge for me. It was just learning what to do when temperatures got cold outside. So this is my kitchen. It's right on your right when you come in the door. And as you can see, it's a nice big open space with the tall ceilings. Some of my favorite things are, I just, I love the full size fridge. I don't have to worry about not having enough space. I can cook plenty of food for the week and it fits in there, no problem. I can meal prep and throw things in the freezer and I don't have to worry about space. So that was one of my favorite things about this house is that it came with a full size refrigerator 
Um, I do have a smaller just RV stove top and oven, which works perfectly fine for me. It's got three burners. So I don't think I've ever needed more than that at one time. Usually I just use one and then the full size microwave. And then the other thing I love so much about this kitchen is just how much space there is. I've got plenty of storage for all my glasses. I've got multiple sets of dishes and all of my Tupperware. And so there's just plenty of storage for everything I need. Although the counter space isn't huge over here, I've got the table right here. And so I can chop vegetables while it's here and then just turn around and cook it on my stovetop. So it's really handy. And as you can see, it's a nice big table. This actually folds down so that if I need more space here, which is usually where I exercise is right in this area, I just pull out the stools. And then right underneath here is a mechanism where I pull up and then press it and it folds down just like that. So it really opens up the kitchen space a lot. I can use this area for really anything I want. During the daytime, this house is just naturally lit so, so nicely. I mean, we don't even have lights on right now and we can see perfectly fine. If I was going to change anything with the windows though is this one right here. It's a little small. Um, I like that it allows me to put a picture up there, but I think if I was going to redo the house, I would get a window that fits more of there in that space. Allows me to look out when I'm doing dishes, maybe one that can open, um, allow a little more fresh air in. But other than that, the windows are just, they're great. I love them. I just love how much natural light they allow. The other thing I love is just all of the storage. Up here, I'm able to fit all kinds of stuff, like my air fryer, which originally I wasn't sure if I should buy something so big because being a tiny kitchen, where am I gonna keep it? But this big, nice big cabinet just allows me to have some of those big appliances that I really like. And over here is the pantry. Again, it's Ikea, so I was able to go and buy more shelves. So I've, I'm able to fit everything I need. Um, I keep most of my food in here. And then up top is snacks, Tubby's food, cookies. Um, and then another big cabinet that I use for a lot of my appliances is this one. It's also where I keep my fire extinguisher right by the kitchen, just in case. And this is also Tubby's corner. So she has a slow feeder because even though she, her name is Tubby, she definitely lived up to that name and she loves to eat very quickly. So she's got her food and water and this is her little area over here. And then over here, I work from home. So I have my office space here. There's enough room to fit two monitors, which is really handy for my job because I'm often using both screens. And then over here is the bedroom. We've got a Murphy bed here, so it can go up into the wall and then open up this whole space. Um, there's a shelf on, on the other side, so if you wanted to use that for your office space, you could, but I prefer to just leave the bed down. That way, my cat Tubby, who's here, she can sleep on her bed whenever she wants. In the bedroom, you can see that I've got lots of storage. I've got these two big cabinets up here, and then my wardrobe that's down here. So in here is my wardrobe. I have hanging clothes, so shirts, dresses, and then on the bottom, I have all of, or a good portion of my shoes. And then I have a couple of baskets of other clothes and there's plenty of room for everything I need. One thing I really like about both having so much storage in my house, but also having these big walls is that I can fill them with artwork and other things that just make it feel like home versus I don't have to use what little wall space that's available for storage. Like for instance, I have a friend who had a tiny house and she didn't have enough storage, so she had to hang her plates on the wall. So I don't have to do that. I've got plenty of cabinet space in the kitchen for all of my plates and my dishes. And so I'm able to use the wall space I have here to hang photographs and hang pictures. So I'm an archeologist. That's what I do for my profession. I got this poster years ago from the Society for California Archaeology Conference. 
October is California Archaeology Month, and so I had it framed. It was my first conference that I went to as an archaeologist, and so it's just a really good memory of the start of my career and as a student, and so I made sure that it came with me when I moved into this house. I haven't had challenges finding parking. I think part of that is choosing where I live. When I lived in Washington before moving to Colorado, and I got pretty lucky that the RV park that I was interested in, that they had no problem with tiny houses. And then moving to Colorado, there is only one RV park that allows tiny houses. So I was able to get a spot here. And here I pay $720 a month, and that includes water, sewer, garbage, and internet. But I do pay electricity on top of that. And that's usually like $10 to $30 a month, so it's not too bad. So my parking plans for the future definitely depend on what my life leads me to. If I decide to stay in Colorado, I would like to get a little piece of land and put my house there, and that way I can have a garden and just have it be my own space. But if I move, somewhere else, then I definitely plan to just find a place to park my house and then just see if that's the place I want to be. Eventually, when I like when I decide where I want to be long term, I definitely want to get a plot of land and put and put it on there. Um, but the only problem is not every place, not every county allows tinies. So that's definitely a big uh, factor in where where I put my house. Then if we come over here, at the back of the house is the bathroom. It has a washer-dryer combo right here underneath the sink. So it's got the full-size shower stall, which I really like because I don't feel cramped at all in there. And then the washer-dryer combo is just so handy. I don't even have a laundry basket because I just take off my clothes, throw it in there, and then when it gets full, I just start a load of laundry. So it makes life a lot easier. I don't have to go to a laundromat. I don't have to use the laundry facilities here at the RV park. It just streamlines my life a lot. And then I've got a nice big sized medicine cabinet. So you can see it's got quite a few shelves so I can fit pretty much everything I need in there. And then over here on the other side of the bedroom is the living room and it is the other side of the house that has the the other slide out and it's also where the front door is so here i have it's also an ikea couch and it pulls out into a queen size bed so it's really nice with this nice wide living room so that there's storage under here and then it's also a queen size bed and as you can see i keep blankets i keep my backpacking backpack I keep um, any of my bags for travel and really just anything that I don't use day to day, but I want close by at hand for when, um, when I do need it. So then, oh, and then for the bed, this folds down and it lays flat and then um, you just make it up and it's a queen size bed. And Tubby loves to sit in the sun. When the sun comes in through that window, she just loves to come up here and lay down. You can see here is her cat tree and she can go all the way up to the top. She can jump onto the cabinets and walk over. And then she's got her cat bridge right there that goes into the loft, which she loves because that's where the heater and air conditioning is. And I just use the loft for storage and for Tubby. So that's specifically why we made the cat bridge is so that she can just go wherever she wants in the house. And then up here, we've got my dual air system. So it's a heater and air conditioner. And this house was built in Canada. So it was built for Canadian winters. So the insulation is really good. This just one unit is able to keep my house nice and warm. And then in the summer, um, it gets pretty warm here. So it really easily cools the house down with the air conditioner. So in the living room, there's several cabinets. They're all Ikea. So the ones up here, the entertainment unit is Ikea and then all of these cabinets. These all came empty, but I was able to, because it's Ikea, I was able to just buy some more shelves, put it in all of these, and it just created a lot more storage space. And then as for Tubby, 
because being a cat, she has to have a litter box. And so this is her little corner over here. I got this end table. It conceals the litter box. So she goes in through that little door and then I just open this to clean her litter box. It's super easy and keeps the space really clean. And then she's got her little scratcher and her litter genie over there, which hides all of the smell. So even though it's a small space and she's a cat and she's got a cat box, I don't really ever smell it, which is nice. One of my absolute favorite things about this house, well, I love the ceilings, just the wood on the ceiling is gorgeous. And so that's one of my absolute favorite features. But along with that is just the tall ceilings. It opens up the space so much. It allows for windows along the top and just tons of natural light. And then above the cabinets here are three additional windows between the room. And so it allows light from these upper windows to get over to the bedroom, which is really nice. I do think there's a sense of com camaraderie with tiny houses and tiny living, but also living in an RV park, we've got a mix of tinies and RVs. And I found that there's kind of just a sense of community no matter what you live in because you're all living this lifestyle, whether you're in a tiny house like I have or like a typical RV. It's been really nice because you, you can learn so much from each other and living in a place like this like we'll have fires on weekends and hang out and you just really get to know people and become good friends because you're all kind of doing the same thing yeah i mean it's a great lifestyle i definitely i don't regret it at all before i went tiny i always loved watching like all the tiny house shows on tv and stuff never really thought i would do it but i definitely i'm i'm really glad i did it, it's perfect for me and i think a lot more people would like to go tiny than they do and it's kind of scary but i think i mean if anybody's thinking about it then definitely consider taking the plunge maybe go see some tiny houses and see how you would feel living in there and i know a lot of people too like they don't want to go tiny because they don't want to climb up a ladder into a loft or stairs which is also why the house I have is so great because I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> Enter for your chance to win a tiny house and support a great cause. Go to omaze.com slash tiny house expedition. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by tiny house expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.